Hi, I'm Leah and this video is about language and there's several different parts about language that I'd like to cover but in this particular video I'm just going to look at one part of it um, that I find difficult um, so I thought it might help other people who are autistic or have this difficulty um, or are really aware of this and find it hard um, maybe helpful to families, friends Anyway, I thought I'd put it out there. So um, I've been investigating for a very, very, very long time about and playing with language and sort of seeing what's happening. And it seems like, you know, there's there's many different aspects to language. And the things that I want to focus on today is about spoken word and then the feelings and intentions and separating those two things because I feel like they become really, really messy, um, you know, mixed together. So this this video is just an observation. It's not meant with any judgment because I'd be judging myself as well because I've definitely like worked to try and fit into this, to try and socialise and try and be amongst people. And um, yeah, so, you know, I, I'm like, I've experienced this myself as well and it just feels like something that I really want to put out there and look at um, to try and help move through something with that, hopefully, or to, just to try and help others who might be having difficulty with the same. So um, to begin with, with language, I've always found I really only understand really simple, clear, direct truth and um, everything else I find really difficult. Um, so I don't understand clues, hints, body language, like most of the time, like nearly all of the time, I wouldn't understand that. Um, voice tone, facial expressions, you know, all of those things I find really, really difficult. And just direct, honest truth is really the thing that I really only get, you know, like that I can really make sense of properly. Um, so... Yeah, all of those kinds of things like hints and clues and body language and stuff like that. It's just like so much to translate and I don't understand how to translate it. Like it's like I just don't get it. And um, then, of course, with sensory issues and things like that coming into it in conversation, it's all quite a lot to try and work out. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I've got next need needing clarity. I really need clarity. I like to speak with clarity and I like to be spoken to with clarity. But it seems like there's a real difficulty with that in society. Like that's not OK most of the time. Um, so I find yeah, feelings don't match words a lot of the time. Um, so like someone you know people could say things and that's not how they really feel and that's it's like being spoken to of opposites at the same time um yeah and it's like it's really confusing to know which one it is um so um true yeah there's like the feeling the truth like the person's feeling and then the spoken word which is like appearance if they don't match um so yeah that's like combined together into one thing and I felt like I've had to fit into this as well and it's took me a lot of figuring out of you know as a child and growing up of how to try and do that and I never feel comfortable with it it just feels horrible I'd much rather just say exactly what I'm feeling um that I have done a lot in my life and it's not yeah it just doesn't really go well <laughs> um and I think that's something that a lot of autistic people say that they would be seen as being outspoken rude um I don't know like it's really just directness and honestness and I think often people will label things as like being good or bad or right or wrong um, and I think that's where the difficulty comes in because then it's hard to actually say anything without it being seen as you know that it's judgmental or anything so yeah a lot of the time I feel something ob see something observationally rather than judgmentally and 
it's hard to get that across for people to understand where I'm coming from so throughout my life I've tried to figure out how to just sort of join in with this other way of um speaking and I, I it it's really awkward that's what that's where I find a lot of social awkwardness comes from as well um because I'm, I'm not comfortable with that so then I end up like a lot of the time being really quiet or trying to find something to do or you know things like that so um I'll just check my notes because I've got everything in order um yeah and th those two things come in at the same time like if it's you know obviously it's not all the time but it is most of the time often um you know you've got opposites coming together like things like people not wanting to say no or or things like that and um yeah it's it, it feels like a real sensory that's like another sensory overload it's like kind of very mixed up signals of of and in, of information all come in um because I do definitely feel even the slightest energy change like if something if someone's not happy with something or you know they're angry about something or something like that I can feel that energy change but I don't necessarily know why and if somebody doesn't speak to me really directly and clearly then I won't understand why but I can feel it and then that feels really uncomfortable and I'm sure this is the same for a lot of you know I'm sure most people probably do feel this as well uh be interesting to see <laughs> um but these things aren't things that people really talk about much you know it's just not really something that most people say anything about so that's why I thought I'd make a video as well like I really like bringing things up out into the open that aren't necessarily spoken about very openly <laughs> often um so yeah this this feeling it's it's like I really need a very clear direct like a simple rule you know like a simple thing that I can really trust so if it, if it feels very shaky like I'm not sure what to trust and it's it's really uncomfortable um and yeah I mentioned that earlier I've got that next on the list about being direct um and that that's not liked and truth isn't wanted and I don't I'm not interested in in being like likable you know like trying to fit in and, and have loads of people like me I'd much rather people like me for me and not for who they think I am um but it's really uncomfortable when it's just you know it's just going to keep causing a lot of discomfort if people are really direct about things um so coming from that kind of angle of it is what I mean um social rules like it's it seems like um the appearance things being on the surface is really important um and the actual feeling the you know the opposite the, the feeling that people feel is um you know like not not so welcome and okay to talk about and be honest about it's sort of like um yeah and it, it feels as, as you know to me it feels scary and unsettling because I'm not sure what's going on in front of me you know if I'm sort of um talking to someone um and the same if I felt like I've had to fit into you know to to not say what I want to say like I also find that scary and unsettling um so yeah and that comes from like I feel like there's an appearance wanted in return um and I feel too aware like not too aware you know I, I don't want to not be aware of it but I feel really aware of it and that feels really awkward you know to feel like I'm supposed to be a certain way and that's not the way that I am um uh things like small talk and and um yeah like that that's often a big issue for autistic people to deal with um like how like words like you know like when people say how are you like it took me a really really long time to understand that people don't aren't necessarily most of the time actually asking really how you are it's sort of almost scripted really like you know you're supposed to say oh how are you oh I'm fine how are you yeah I'm fine um 
and it feels like you're not supposed to be too good either as well as not too bad it's like it's just sort of I don't know it just feels like a real scripted sort of thing and I've heard people from other countries saying that it's not like that not in all other countries but in certain other countries that it's not like that and that if somebody says how are you that they actually really mean it and they expect you know they would expect like a really quite a deep conversation and stuff like that so it's probably a cultural thing as well um yeah but it's that's something that I struggle with because I'm always assuming that whatever I'm presented with is the truth so if somebody's asking me how I am or something like that it's like my brain's always going to you know come out with the truth and and say that and then that's not how you know most of the time that it is it's meant to be something really short and yeah scripted so um it's like I've got some sort of like my brain's trying to do something else and I'm trying to remember something else at the same time that I'm not supposed to do it like that I'm supposed to do it like this so what comes naturally you know I have to sort of sidestep it I don't have to you know I, I am aware like I don't have to do that but you know it's sort of um yeah creates a lot of awkwardness and uncomfortableness in certain situations so um ah sorry I'm just reading my notes yeah so often I'm looking at you know it's it are a lot of these things a true connection it doesn't feel like a true connection um a lot a lot of um socialization doesn't feel like any kind of real connection at all feels more as I said just very surface and scripted but that that's how it appears to me and that comes with non-judgment like I'm just literally just seeing it as an observation and an observation of something I've joined in with and done part of as well um but I'm just seeing it as that and I'm also understanding that that could you know that maybe that's the way that a lot of people really like that to be and they really enjoy that and they really love things to be like that so I'm really appreciating that that could be other people's right way to do it um and I'm not saying my way is the right way I'm just voicing those experiences for others that might also experience things like that um and wonder if other people also you know experience things like that (laughs) um so yeah my my, I find it very difficult to really feel relaxed um especially with other people and my feeling of peace and relaxation is the trust of full truth like really I've really really realized that that if I'm in the company of somebody who I really can trust will tell me full truth um then you know there's nothing to figure out there's nothing to try and process it's like really hard processing trying to figure out what's going on um so there's no like feeling of like oh have I guessed that right have I understood that right you know it's just really clear and I can say to that person like you know is is that what that means and is that like that and it all feels very calm and really nice um there's only a few people that I've experienced that with but that that feels really peaceful to me um something else along these lines that I don't want to go into big on this video because it's kind of its own video if you like um is gaslighting and that's you know that's when it's if you don't know what that is then you know you could look it up but it's basically you um doing the opposite uh saying the opposite to the feeling um, but using it in a manipulative way. Um, yeah, I'm talking about like the darker kind of manipulative gaslighting because, you know, all, all those opposites are gaslighting. Um, but, you know, I'm talking about like when people use that as manipulation. So that that's something I would want to talk about separately another time. Um, but that comes into it as well with trying to figure things out socially and with people. Um, and... The feeling in words as well, I wanted to mention, you know, there's there's a lot of pressure with things like certain things like being um, politically correct and things like that, um, which, you know, 
I do I've noticed like sometimes people will get the words right with the political correctness to to appear like they're being politically correct but they might not necessarily have um the feeling like the feeling of respect and um inclusivity and things like that you know what whatever that involves they might not actually have that deep respect for what they're given the impression that they're being politically correct about and then another person might have really deep respect but get their words muddled or say say the wrong words sometimes and it it, i've noticed that if people do that oftentimes they'll get really really um shouted at for that or treated in a way of like um without patience whereas the person who's just said the words and not necessarily has the feeling is like you know that that's fine as long as the words are said so things like that as well that I've noticed um and just wanted to touch on because um yeah <laughs> so you know to do with appearances and then actual feeling you know that separation of feeling and and spoken word um Oh, I'm just reading that about last bit. Yeah, I think that's it, really. I just wanted to just go over those few things and see if that's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just wanted to put that out there. Um, yeah, so some of the other things that I, I would like to cover in with language, um, being autistic and language in another video is um like processing language which is that this is kind of involved in that because that all of that sort of mixed up feeling words being opposite um is a lot to process so that processing comes into this one and then things like written written words and emails and messages and and letters and things like that um and delayed early speech things like that coming into language and um verbal instructions that's, that's that's something i'd like to do a video about um yeah and hearing yeah just um issues to do with hearing which isn't really to do with hearing it's more a sensory thing but i will come back to that in another video um yeah so bye <laughs>